Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Mission Snapshot. As always, we are so thankful that you're here because we love to be able to bring you stories from the mission field and we're glad that you are interested too to hear the stories as well. Hannah is over there and she'll be dropping some information down below, but as you listen to this episode, if you have any comments or questions, please go ahead and drop them below and Hannah will be there to take care of you. Today in the studio, I have Veronica with me. And normally on Thursdays, Veronica brings us stories from our evening schools or, or stories of our missionaries who are working with children as well. But today we are having a special episode and we want to bring to you some of the challenges that the missionaries are facing regarding travel during this uh, time of COVID lockdown. And so this is more about sharing information with you and asking if you would join us in prayer and Veronica has been doing some research. We've been hearing from our missionaries and even from some who are wanting to go as missionaries that um, the travel restrictions are delaying things. Yeah. And so we wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. So Veronica, I'm going to turn the time over to you All right. because you're the one who's been doing yeah. the research. So I've been looking into it a little bit. So we have um, quite a few countries that we have Bible workers or missionaries in and that we enjoy working with. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously with COVID and lockdowns, it has restricted travel. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wanted to give, yeah, overview of okay. specifically now that it's been going on for so many months, you'd think, oh, it's lifting a little bit, but it's not really. Right. So we're going to start in Cambodia. Okay. We want to talk about Cambodia first. So Cambodia, um, they have a lot of restrictions uh not quite so much within the country, but um, they are actually open to travel and open for people to come in, mm -hmm. but they have um, added a lot of restrictions on how you can get in and what okay. you have to do to get there. So for instance, there's only certain airlines that will fly there. Right. Um, uh, there are, once you, um, so let me back up a second. So it used to be that you could you could go there and apply for a visa once you landed. Right. Um, that is no longer the case. You have mm. to have a visa in hand before you go to the country. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more difficult to get the visa. Right. Um, they are very strict on um, who's coming in, like why you need to be there. So their list of exceptions on who they're letting in is kind of short. Um, you know, it needs to be... Um, uh, for some business reason or, um, you know, not just any tourist can get a right. visa and come in. Right. So when you apply, like they're just, they're going over your reasoning, like, why do you need to be here? Right. What's going yeah. on? And so it's really strict. Um, if you are able to get a visa and you can find a flight and get into Cambodia, once you arrive, you then have to hand over uh, at least $2,000 to the government mm. to cover uh, COVID testing and quarantining and possible medical care if you are found positive for COVID. Right. Um, and then you are quarantined until the results of the test come back. Wow. And um, you may or may not get any of that money back. Right. Um, you know, and so that's an added amount of money that they did not need before in right. order to get into the country. Right. So did the website mention anything about insurance and it did, yeah. yes. Um, you have to have proof of your personal medical insurance mm -hmm. that would cover treatments. So like if you are positive for COVID, you have to have proof that, that you have insurance that will mm -hmm. cover the cost of the medical treatment along with whatever you um, supplied to the government. Right. So it sounds like Cambodia is open to an extent. Yes. But the the bar that you have to cross has been raised yes and that may not be easy for people to not only pay for their flights over right. but to have the two thousand dollars in hand and if you don't have enough insurance yeah then you have to buy more insurance and to make sure yeah. that you you have to really want to be going to cambodia it's not going to be just something that you kind of casually right go to absolutely um and there's another thing that it for basically all these countries it, it mentions, and I believe it's kind of overall any type of international travel, 
um, not only are you tested once you arrive in the country, but you actually have to have a certified letter from a medical professional saying that you tested negative within 72 hours of leaving your home country. Oh, okay. So you're tested before you leave your home country. You're tested when you get there. Some places you're tested a third time. Wow. I mean, there's a lot to go through in right. order to, to get into the country. Right. So if you are uh, a, a person who's wanting to go for long-term mission, mm -hmm. then then this is something that you would be willing to, to go through. What's going to also impact are the short-term mission folks who have two weeks of leave from their job right. and they wanted to go and maybe build something or teach at a school for a couple of weeks in order to do some service while they could mm -hmm. take leave and that's going to be impacted because of the quarantine when you get there and it elongates the time that you have to take off work. Absolutely. And so folks may not be Absolutely. able to do that. So best case scenario, just speaking of Cambodia, mm -hmm. you go in and you're tested, they do somewhat rapid testing within two to three days, you'll know um, if you're positive or negative. However, they test everyone on your flight. So if anyone on the flight were to um, test positive, you would be quarantined for the entire 14-day period, right, because then you've been tested exposed. again. Yeah. So uh, potentially you are quarantined no matter what, up to two weeks. And right. um, so yeah, it would take a lot more time off work, a lot more planning for any type of short-term right, missionary right. project. And mm -hmm. a lot of folks who are planning to go as missionaries don't always have a large amount of money no. saved aside. And so this changes the dynamic a little bit for people who are thinking of going over. It definitely does. So normal um, kind of missionary launching procedure, <laughs> you, would, you would want some funds, obviously. Usually those funds are, are used for um, paperwork, visas, that mm -hmm. kind of thing to get into the country. And then maybe a month or two of stipend while you're getting set up right. and getting things going because you don't know if you're going to get funds immediately and how that is going to set up because right, right. every country is different. So usually that's all you need. And mm -hmm. that still is a large sum to a lot of people. Right. Um, but now you're talking about at least $2,000 more than what you would normally need just for Cambodia. Right. And we had a mission snapshot episode with Billy Howell yes. a few episodes ago where he and his family, his wife and his two daughters are wanting to go back to Cambodia to work. And so right. these costs are on a per person basis, yes. not on a per family basis. Correct. So if you have more people in your family, then you multiply all that by four and so yeah. the just that family just, of four right, it's yeah. eight thousand dollars more right. than what they would normally need on top of the airline ticket right. and anything else that they yes. would need yep. right yep absolutely okay. so that's kind of just an overview of cambodia which like i just said that's actually one of the more open <laughs> countries right now believe it or not mm -hmm. so now let's move on to thailand let's okay. talk about thailand a little bit um so thailand is essentially not open they're right. trying to, to open up. They do want to. Um, you know, a lot of these countries, just like the U.S., is suffering um, from, you know, their economy has basically right. collapsed. I mean, more so than us. I don't want to compare what the U.S. is going through because, you know, their economy is uh, based, uh, a more, bigger portion of it is based on tourism right. than our economy. So, you know, they are definitely suffering. So they want to open up. They want to get people in, but they have to be cautious because... Right. Um, they don't want to see any resurgence of COVID and, and they right. don't want to risk their, the lives of, of their people. Right. So they are being more cautious. So Thailand, um, at this point is pretty much closed. They're hoping to open kind of in a phased approach, right. um, this month or next month. And that would include, uh, again, limited, limited visas. So they really scrutinize why are you coming to Thailand? Why right. do you want to be here? Um, it's not open for just anyone vacationing unless you're willing to spend what they call long-term visits. Right. And by that, you, it's a mandatory 14-day quarantine when you first get there, mm -hmm. a mandatory testing when you arrive, and at the end of the 14 days right. um, before you go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then if you leave that immediate uh, city that you flew into, you are tested again. Oh, yeah. um, and then there's um, the visas themselves, instead of getting any type of short 
you know, it used to be, especially if you're just going on vacation, you could do a 30 day visa right. and you could use it anytime within three months or something like that is what they would normally do. So now what they're suggesting is you cannot get anything shorter than a 90 day visa. Mm, and yeah. that 90 day visa can then be um, renewed up to two times. Okay. So potentially you could be there up to close to 120 days. Mm -hmm. um, and before you would have to uh, leave and come back or apply for right. a different type of visa or something right. like that. Um, so it's definitely no longer, at least right now, it is not for just quick mission trips or vacations. Right. They're really just wanting people who are there to help uh, their economy, willing to spend the time and money to right. go through all of their testing, right. quarantining, all of that. Right. Um, so, so it's a commitment. If you're going to go to Thailand, you're yeah. going to make a commitment to go. Yes. And we do have some missionaries who are waiting yes. to go to Thailand as soon as this opens. Yeah. And so are they going to need cash in order to go? Um, so we haven't heard officially. Uh, we do have someone in the office who was researching this as well. And um, because she's working with these ladies who are really eager to get yeah. in and start working. And so she was doing some research and she saw an article that it's talking about um, potentially needing a very large sum of money in your bank account just so that the Thai government can see that you are able to support yourself. So like if right. you get in, you're not relying on finding work there. Right. Or you know, getting help from some of the Thai um, people in order to support your vacation or your time there. Right. And so um, it is possible that the, you will need um, a very, like, upwards of $10,000 shown in your bank account, account right. when you enter Thailand so that they know that you can take care of yourself. Right. You can help their economy by putting money into it. You're not asking for them to help you. Right. And and that makes sense from the country's perspective. Yes. But we know that folks who are trying to get into the mission field, they usually end up, you know, selling everything right. that they have and trying to, you know, settle everything here in, mm -hmm. in the States before they go. And not all of them may be able to have That's the requisite dollar yeah. amount in the in the checking account to be able to satisfy right. the government. That's um, if it comes to that. Like I said, I, I, I personally did not read the article, but I know right. someone in the office who did and. Um, so if it comes down to it and that is what they're asking, that's an extremely large sum to ask, especially of a missionary to have readily available in yeah. their bank account. So, um, it, some of the, um, conditions help us because if you're going as a missionary, you're going long-term. Right. I mean, it hinders the short-term missionaries, but if you're committing to be yeah. a missionary in Thailand, that's great that you can get a 90 day visa yeah, right away. It is. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the money restrictions and things like, like that, that is definitely a hindrance because right. it's harder to think about, oh man, now I have to get that much money. Like that's quite a bit. Right. Um, but God is good and it's his money. And so he that's can right. provide however exactly. much he wants. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No. Uh, and I just want to make sure that our viewers know that I'm, I'm totally behind the prayer and totally oh, yeah. behind you know god providing i just wanted them but it is to another understand. obstacle it's an obstacle it's a new obstacle yeah. absolutely that we haven't yeah. had before right yeah. yes this would be a new yeah uh, okay wow now we're looking at thailand <laughs> and thinking this to launch this missionary you need <laughs> yeah you know twenty thousand dollars like right. it's never been that high before so that's definitely right um, yeah, yeah that is a new concern mm -hmm. um but hopefully the idea of Thailand kind of, I mentioned like a phase, phase in type thing. So they are hoping to open up mm -hmm. eventually to everyone, but they want to make sure that they're keeping people safe. So they're still being very strict on who they're letting in, mm -hmm. why you're there, where you're coming from. It also sounds like they're initially only letting in people from surrounding countries. Right. So more in the Asia area and not necessarily um, UK and, and America. And right. So um, initially, even mm -hmm. if they open back up with all those restrictions, we still may not have access right, right away. So Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with Thailand, and hopefully things will change in the positive yeah. very soon because we do <laughs> right. have people who want to go. But. Right, and because Thailand is doing this experiment of sorts, mm -hmm. so they're letting some people in a, a controlled number, and yeah. they're going to see does that do anything to the... Right the COVID numbers in their country. And if it does not, then they're, 
they want to keep moving toward absolutely right yeah so. they want to keep moving forward and let more and more people come mm -hmm. because that helps their economy it right get back to uh, somewhat normal flow of people right. would definitely help yeah. them. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what they want. Good. So now let's move to India. Let's talk about India a little bit. And yeah. we've talked about this some because that's where our evening schools are. So right. we already mentioned a right. little bit. Um, but uh, India at this point is, it's pretty much completely locked down. They're not really considering letting anyone in or out. <laughs> uh, I mean, and I do mean that even out. Um, a few months ago, they, the U.S. Embassy was like, all right, this is your last chance. If you're here and you, you yeah. know, are you a citizen and you need to get out, we'll help you. But after this date, we're not helping. And they have on their website now, like, we cannot help you get right. plane tickets. We can't talk to the airlines no. for you. We aren't, because it's been going right. on for so long. They're like, if you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> then you are here. You're here. <laughs> um, they're being very, very uh, careful and strict about their borders and right. um, so yeah even getting out of India is actually a struggle right now not to mention getting right. in <laughs> right so for Cambodia and Thailand just for comparison's sake while they have had cases mm -hmm. and they just have not been hit as hard especially Thailand because Thailand closed yes down very tight quickly. very yeah. quickly however India right now is still facing yes. an, a rise in cases and a rise in deaths. Mm -hmm. And so it's not contained in India, perhaps the way it is in Thailand and, Correct. and Cambodia. So, so we're now moving to a country that is trying to deal yeah. with the effects of COVID as well as trying to figure out what to do with the economy. Yeah. yeah. So obviously their economy has been hit extremely hard because yes. their own people are not working right they have locked down that tight um and so it has been tremendously hard for mm -hmm. the people there but as you stated that is correct the the covid cases are just getting worse and worse they're despite the lockdowns and the quarantines mm -hmm. it's not seeming to help right. in many areas of india it is just getting worse right. um by the day and so yeah, seeing a, a lift of restrictions for there is probably not going to happen anytime soon. No, um, no. They would have to see a, you know, definite um, decrease in cases of COVID before they would even, right. you know, consider. Um, I believe they did reopen schools or at least some of the schools. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen where some of our evening schools are able to do lessons now, not just right. um, food. So that's a positive that they're it letting is. them do that. Um, but yeah, and they're they're able to move. Um, like our director is able to go around to and visit people within his uh, city. But you know, going outside of right. that area is still restricted. Right. Um, so they're doing uh, like the the travel between the states. Yeah. is greatly hindered in India right now. They are you you're they're they're loosening it a little bit right. in the various places and the places where COVID isn't as strong, they can move about a little bit more freely, but going between the states yeah. and even in some areas going from one village to the next right. is is it's not still, able to do. Yeah. Right. So there's definite I mean just big restrictions, even if you're in India, where you can go and what you can do is still very restricted. Right. And allowing international tourism is something that's not even on their radar screen at the moment it because is not. they're having to deal with the epidemic in real time with yeah. the cases and the deaths. So yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't I mean, yeah, it's it's just a complete mm -hmm. um, you know, they're still being hit hard. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so unfortunately, you know, that, that doesn't bode well for us getting in and doing more mission mm -hmm. work there right now, but, um, yeah, that's why we need prayer. Yeah. It's why we need them under constant prayer so that we can, um, right. move forward and, and, and get some more work done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how, that's where we are there. And lastly, we're going to talk about the Philippines. Okay. Um, we, um, have some contacts there who uh, are trying to work as best they can through this. Mm -hmm. uh, the Philippines are also like completely locked down basically. I mean, they, um, they struggle to travel even within uh, the, you know, around your island that you're on. Mm -hmm. There's really no moving from island to island. Right. Um, 
you're you're pretty much locked down a lot like India and they're not letting anyone in at this point it's pretty much all like nope you're not <laughs> right if you're um, not a citizen of the Philippines right then you're not yeah in. so right so there are you know some uh, mm -hmm. exceptions just like any other so if you are you know um, a citizen uh, or a uh, spouse to a citizen or something like that then you can um, get in and out, but it's still very restricted and they're still very critical of why are you leaving? Why are you coming back? Right. What's going, you know, and, and of course there's quarantine procedures mm -hmm. if you have left and are coming back. Um, and they have restrictions, uh, for instance, those who can move around, uh, have to be within the ages of 59, 21 to 59. So if you're older than 59 or younger than 21, you can't wow. go anywhere. I mean, you're like, yeah, you really can't go anywhere. Um, and so just things like that. If you are allowed to go, is, say, into another city or a little village or whatever, they have time limits. So, like, you go into the other city, you have to be back at a checkpoint by a certain mm. time. And if you're not, then you're immediately put into quarantine. It doesn't matter. Wow. And it's a, um, you know, government quarantine facility. You're not allowed to go back home. Wow. You have to meet these checkpoints at a certain time. Um, and so, you know, that's always a concern because if you're moving about doing mission work or whatever, you know, lots of things could hold you up. Right. And, and so if you're not back at that checkpoint at a certain time, sorry, 14 <laughs> days in this, you know, wow. government facility to be quarantined. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very strict right, right. now. It's and you were talking about around. the age restrictions mm -hmm. and one of our missionaries is 59 and a half. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so he was saying, you know, as of, I think he mentioned February, I think his birthday yeah. is in, in February, and he's like, I don't know, I may not be able to right. do anything after that, at least not by going out. Right. Um, but, you know, we've also seen that uh, from our Bible workers in India, that they have found many ways yes. to still do God's work and communicate right. with people without being able to go physically village to village to village. Right. And so, uh, you know, he may just have to find new new avenues, new ways right. of doing things. But um, we also pray that that, that uh, restriction might be lifted by then. Right. And he will be able to still travel even though he's now older. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a lot of restriction even within the country. Yeah. Wow. That's um, that's sobering information, and and the reason that we wanted to bring this to you is because here in our offices we've been praying a lot about asking God to open up the doors mm -hmm. again for us to be able to go, and we wanted to invite you mm -hmm. to pray with us um, in 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 asking for these doors to open so yeah. we we can go and you may have uh, watched the program and thought you know I'd really like to help you know with this like for the the missionaries who are wanting to go and needing the extra funding okay. and whatnot and if that's what you would like to do we invite you to email us or to call our office Hannah's going to drop our email link below and our phone number below and then you know we can talk with you about the best way to mm -hmm. be able to financially help the new missionaries gather the funding that they need yes. in order to get into Thailand or Cambodia mm -hmm. um, because right now the Philippines and India are are not open so if that's something you're interested in please do give us an email or call us and for prayer we have seen through um, our own connections with God but also through the inspiring stories of the Bible workers and even the children in the oh, evening yeah. schools, Absolutely. the power of prayer. Yes. And, and that's why we're inviting you to join with us in prayer. And we wanted to have a quick prayer mm -hmm. together right now, if you would, would join us with that before we end the program. So do you want to give sure. a prayer? Sure. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to lift these um, restrictions and um, situations with COVID up to you right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know that we are here to serve you. Mm -hmm. And so we just pray that you will guide the government leaders in these countries mm -hmm. um, as they try and, and deal with COVID and keeping their people safe. Mm -hmm. um, we know that they're doing 
the best they can for their country but we also realize that that might be keeping them from knowing you mm-hmm. which is more important than uh, contracting COVID and um, so we just pray for your guidance over the leaders who are making these decisions mm-hmm. and um, that you will also show us ways to trust in you to have faith that you will provide ways in and we just thank you for giving us these opportunities and that we can still work for you even in these times mm-hmm. in Jesus name we pray amen amen thank you very much and we thank you for your prayers because we know that there are so many people out there who still need to hear the gospel yes. before Jesus comes. And so we want them to be able to know that they have a Father who loves them and a Savior who died for them. And so thank you so much for joining us in prayer. If you are interested in learning more about Jesus for Asia and the other projects that we have, I invite you to go to our website at jesusforasia.org and look at the many projects that we have there. We have over 60 of them. And we also invite your prayer for the projects as well because we know prayer is important and prayer Mm -hmm. works. And so we invite you to pray for them as well. If you are watching this on YouTube, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. If you're watching this on Facebook, we invite you to like our page and that way you will get information about when we're going live next and we really want to have you come back and join us again thank you veronica for sharing this information with us thank you for joining us this has been your mission snapshot